What's up, guys? Three, two, one, go. <laughs> What's up, guys? Mike Bledsoe here with Doug Larson, Chris Moore, and David Gross. We're here from Barbell Shrug Podcast to explain 14.2 and how to strategize it. Uh, we're going to break down pacing, warm up, technique, and the mobility you need, and maybe some tips and tricks in case you get fatigued and just need to survive. So stay tuned. Just in case you get fatigued. Just in case you get fatigued. <laughs> just, just in case. You want to go first? I'm going to go first. All right, dude, lay it on me. Okay. Uh, first, I'm quiet on the set. <laughs> uh, first, I'm going to talk about pacing. Uh, the first thing I'm going to say is I'm going to make an analogy to a 400 meter run. So basically, the way the workout works is that you're doing a certain volume in a certain period of time. Every three minutes, you have to do a little bit more than the three minutes prior. You should know the workout at this point. Uh, I'm going to make an analogy to running. So if you're doing a 400 meter run in three minutes, you wouldn't run 400 meters in one minute, be super tired, and then try to rest two minutes to get more rest, and then try again to run 500 meters in three minutes, and then 600 meters in three minutes. You wouldn't run those, those laps as fast as possible. What you would try to do is run 400 meters at a three minute pace. And then if it goes to 500 meters for the next three minutes, you would run 500 meters at a three minute pace. Okay? You're trying to cross the finish line right on time. You're not trying to go as fast as possible and then get more rest. That, if you were trying to run a race like that, that would be the worst way to do it. So what you want to do with a workout like this is the exact same thing. You don't want to do all your reps in a minute and a half and then have a minute and a half to rest. What you want to do, the most efficient thing to do, is to go unbroken if you're any kind of good at CrossFit, you should be able to go unbroken on at least the first couple rounds. You want to go unbroken and then you want to rest casually between the movements. So the first round you're going to do 10 reps and then casually walk over to the pull-up bar. Maybe it takes 20 seconds before you start that set of pull-ups. Do your 10 reps unbroken, casually walk back to the overhead squat bar. Maybe it takes 20 seconds again. Do your, do your overhead squats, excuse me, then casually walk over, 20 second break. Do your your pull-ups again, casually walk over, wait until the three minutes is up, and then you're gonna keep pace like that, trying to go unbroken because that's the most efficient way to do your reps, and then over time, as the rounds progress, you're gonna try and shorten the rest intervals in between your unbroken sets, okay? Uh, on top of that, eventually you're gonna get tired and have to break up your sets, that's just the way it is. Uh, the first two sets, again, if you're any kind of good at CrossFit, you're probably going to go unbroken, at least the first two rounds, excuse me, not sets, the first two rounds, you're probably going to go unbroken. What you don't want to do is go to failure at all. So if you get to the third, fourth, fifth round, what you don't want to do if you have 14 reps to do in a row and you know you're going to go to failure and you're going to be grinding through an overhead squat and barely make a rep or fail on a rep, say rep 10 out of 14, you don't want to get to rep 10 where you're all the way to failure where you drop the bar and then you're doing two sets of two because you hit failure and your, your pace is off. What you want to do instead in, in a case like that where you would failure, you would reach failure, excuse me, at rep 10 is you want to do two sets of seven or something similar. You want to go a few reps shy of failure and you don't actually want to hit failure unless you absolutely have to. If, you know, if you're almost out of time, then sure, you, you can go to failure and you just need to get as many reps as you possibly can right before the buzzer. But if you have plenty of time, you don't ever want to hit failure. Hitting failure is a bad idea. You're going to get less reps overall if you actually hit failure, so don't do that. If you go to failure, you're going to have a bad time. Bad time, that's right. <laughs> um, you want to talk about mobility, and then I'm going to talk about, I'm going to show the mobility techniques. You want, if you want to go over the yeah, why. I'm going to go over a uh, technique real quick, and then we're going to talk about how the mobility uh, some doing some mobility work before you even warm up is going to help you get in good positions for that good technique. What's going to get taxed here the most is more than likely going to be your shoulders. And you can reduce the amount of fatigue that your shoulders take by making sure that you're in good positions for, uh, or a good position for the overhead squat. So there's a few things you can do to make sure that your, your torso is as up and down as possible. I would actually tell you not to sit back when you squat just sit straight down, try to keep that chest up, straight up and down. That way, your shoulders aren't having to crank back when you're doing your overhead squats. So, a uh, quick trick on that is wear high-heeled weightlifting shoes. Don't wear the Reebok CrossFit shoe. Wear a legitimate weightlifting shoe if you can get your hands on them. I like the, uh, the new... You mean your feet? Get your feet on them? Your feet on them? Never mind. All right. <laughs> I'm in the zone, bro. <laughs> 
No, but get like the Adidas high heel shoe. That, those have a pretty good uh, clip on the back, and that's going to raise your heels up, which gonna, is going to allow you to sit just a few more degrees straight up and down. That's going to make a huge difference. There's a reason weightlifters wear those things, all right? So it's going to help you out in this wad, even if they're a little bit heavier for you. Add like maybe half a pound for those uh, chest bar pull-ups. I think they're going to really save your shoulders for the overhead squats, all right? Your first lift, you're going to go straight into a, uh, you're gonna do a squat snatch for your first rep. Drop all the way to the bottom. Make sure you relax your hands. So what you don't want to do is wear your hands out. I would even go as far as, even though the weight is super light, doing a hook grip when you're snatching that weight overhead. You're going to really wear your grip out on these chest bar pull-ups, and you want to save it every opportunity you get. When you get overhead, think about turning that elbow down. A lot of people tend to they get tired, and they let that the elbow go back, and then that, what's going to happen there is your shoulder's going to fatigue there. If you can get nice and set here, and Doug's going to talk about the mobility exercise you can do so you can get in a better shoulder position here. So trying to get that hand loose on the bar here and that shoulder externally rotated and you're going to be in a much better spot. Uh, when you put down the bar from the overhead squats, don't let the bar ghost ride. Don't like ghost ride that bar and let it skip 10 feet away from you because you're probably going to have thin plates on that sucker and it's just going to take right off. Let the bar down, that way you don't have to go chase it across the room for your next set, all right? For your kipping pull-ups, really common mistake, especially for butterfly. I see people's feet getting really <laughs> far out. So I'm gonna feel my feet real quick. So what I tend to see is people's feet, they're like, they're all over place like that. You're losing a lot of power there, okay? Smack those feet together. I've even taken athletes and tied their, their feet together with a band and have them do pull-ups there. Next thing you know, they're getting a little more power and it's a little bit easier just to get their chest to the bar. In addition to keeping your feet together so you don't lose power, make sure that you're keeping your core tight. Another thing I see on, on people trying to get just a little bit higher in the pull-ups, is they try to get a bigger kip by creating more movement at a place where you're not really supposed to have more movement. They end up in this really crazy back bend. Keep that core tight, get the energy from your hips, not from your, not from your uh, your back, okay? So keep that tight, let your hips transfer that energy, straighten your hands so you can get a nice high kip and chest to the bar. Shakira style, baby. Shakira style, for sure. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, and Doug's probably gonna go into this if you go into survival mode, and that is mixing up your grip. <clears throat> for some of you, you know that it's gonna be really tough for the uh, chest bar pull-ups, and you're gonna start mixing grip up a little bit sooner than later. All right, am I missing anything in regard to that? Here, I'll, I'll expand on that. Well, yeah, before we go into that, I was gonna say. Do you know what I was gonna say? No, I don't know what you're gonna say. But I'm gonna let you just go into your whole piece okay. in a second. So, okay. uh, uh, hang on. <laughs> fight already. Are you uh, done? Yeah, uh, yeah, All right, so. <laughs> all that it's a shit show, folks. <laughs> all that positional work I was talking about, Wearing shoes, trying to get more upright, putting your shoulders in good positions. Uh, a lot of that's going to rely on the mobility piece for your shoulders and your ankles. So Doug's going to talk a little bit about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I am going to talk about that. Real quick, I forgot one thing. Uh, especially for the ladies or anyone who's just not good at gymnastics or not as good at gymnastics as you are at overhead squats. Um, you're going to want to go hard on your overhead squats if you know you're going to break on your pull-ups and you already know that you're going to rest on your pull-ups, then you don't want to rest when you're doing your overhead squats. You can redline a little more on your overhead squats because you know that you're going to have to break on your pull-ups so you can rest during your sets of pull-ups. Okay, so redline on your overhead squats. If overhead squats are way easier for you, if you're having trouble on chest to bar pull-ups, because that, in my opinion, is a harder movement for most people, and the overhead squat weight isn't very heavy, so the pull-ups are probably going to be harder. So you can go a little bit harder on your overhead squats and redline there, get a little more tired than you, than you think you normally would if you're even on both movements. That way you can have a little bit of extra rest during your pull-ups because you know you're going to have to break because it's not a cardio thing with your pull-ups. It might be more of a strength thing on the pull-ups. So you're going to have to rest a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to go into these, uh, these three mobility movements that, that we've chosen for this workout. Two of them are, are overhead reach, uh, shoulder flexion stretches, and then one is for your ankles. So I'm just going to demo those real quick. Uh, the first one, just a bow and arrow stretch. Just put your hand 
your hand in a band, excellently rotate, you can grab your thumb if you'd like, uh, which is the way that K-Star recommends you do it. If you haven't seen that, go watch Mobility Wad. He has awesome videos on the bow and arrow stretch. You're just going to come here, put your head underneath, and try to get the longest distance you can in between your hand and your foot, stretching all this down here. You can hold that for two minutes per side. Stretch number two. You're basically doing overhead reach again, but this time you're doing it with a bent elbow so you can you can step on a band. I usually squat down and then stand, ribs down, elbow right next to my head. I'm doing overhead reach, this time with a bent elbow, uh, which changes the stretch just a little bit. Again, two minutes per side. And then number three is an ankle mobility stretch. I like to put the band again right at the very bottom of my shin bone, and then I step, kick and stomp. Okay, and then from here, I'm just gonna push my knee forward, foot flat, big toe grabbing the ground, push my knee forward and to the outside. Again, roughly two minutes per side, trying to find wherever is sticky for you. Okay? So depending on who you are, maybe you have more range of motion with your shoulders than you do with your ankles. You should focus more on your ankles. Maybe your ankles are good and you need more help with your shoulders. You can tweak it for you depending on where you're tight, but shoulders and ankles are probably gonna be the top two limitations for uh, the techniques in this workout since they're both overhead. Uh, the, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, kind of survival mode and or like little little tweaks that you can make to your technique depending on who you are and kind of where you're hurting at the time. So first with the overhead squat, if you have, if you have achy wrists and good shoulder mobility then it's easier to overhead squat with a more narrow grip. The more narrow your grip is the easier it's going to be on your wrist specifically if your wrists are fine, but you have poor shoulder mobility, widening up is gonna make it easier on your shoulders. So the wider you go, the less shoulder mobility you need. The more narrow you go, the more shoulder mobility you need. So you, you can make that trade off, and depending on how your wrists feel, maybe you can even change your grip up throughout the wad, depending on how you're feeling. Uh, next point on overhead squats, if you're a long, lanky person, getting full depth with your feet narrow and straight ahead is gonna be extremely hard. Okay? If you go a little bit wider and toe out a little bit more, if you're a person with very long limbs and or very poor ankle mobility, this is going to let you get lower and get all the way below parallel. Again, especially if you have poor ankle mobility and longer limbs. Okay? Uh, finally, uh, to elaborate on Mike's point from earlier, if your grip is getting very tired, going with, going instead of with a, uh, a palms forward grip like this, you can switch around and it'll be easier to hang onto the bar if you're if you have a mixed grip uh, towards the end of the wad. <laughs> All right, David. There was nothing specified about um, anything that any uh, prevention of you wearing gloves or the gymnastics um, uh, grippers. If you know that you have um, sensitive skin and your hands are going to rip early and they normally do, you might want to look into something like that um, and, and, and start practicing with that early uh, because you don't want your limiter to be uh, your hands. Uh, torn and uh, and you still have some left in the tank but you're bleeding all over the place and, and you're in pain. I'm going to go over a, a how to structure a warm-up for this workout. I'm looking for a uh, up to a 20 minute workout here. Uh, we saw Selena and Camille um, go for go for right up to 20 minutes. Um, so I'm looking I'm looking for a 10 or 15 minute warm-up. Um, I'm in this in this warm-up I'm always going to start off with getting my heart rate up. I'm going to elevate my heart rate uh, preferably on the airdyne or the rower. Uh, running if you don't have any of those. With this, I'm going to I'm going to warm up to a 95% pace. Uh, with the 95% pace, I'm looking to mimic the breathing that I'm going to have in the workout. You definitely want to breathe like you're going to do overhead squats and pull-ups for 20 minutes, so it's not a surprise when you get there. Um, I definitely want to be comfortable with breathing and, and accept the way that I'm breathing and, and sweating um, before I even get to it. Uh, so again, it's not a, a huge surprise. Uh, for this 10 to 15 minute warm up, I'm going to start with a 3 minute heart rate elevation at anywhere from 80 to 85%. So on a scale of 1 to 100, um, I'm, I'm at a sustainable pace, but I'm not killing myself. Dynamic mobility. Um, with that, I'm looking at air squats, like Doug was telling you. I'm going to look at uh, how I'm going to squat, my foot placement, and my ankles and stuff like that. So definitely look at and getting into some air squats and thoracic mobility. You're going to have a lot of a uh, lot of thoracic demand in this warm up or this workout with the overhead squat and uh, and the flexion extension that you're going to be going into. 
So looking at flexion and extension of the, of the thoracic um, and the obliques. So you want to make sure that your core is set to handle the weight overhead. So maybe some pull off presses and you could check those out in Technique Wad too. Um, so warming up the obliques. Once we get done with that, this is going to be about a two minute piece focused on air squats and thoracic. Uh, we're going to go back into a three minute heart rate elevation of a higher intensity, 85 to 90% this time. So we're going to start to sweat a little more. Then we're going to go into an overhead press work with a barbell overhead press regular grip, then we're going to go into some snatch grip overhead press. Um, with the, uh, with the, after we get done with that, we're going to focus again about a minute of pull-up work at a horizontal. Um, so maybe some dumbbell rows, just getting those lats engaged and, and getting some blood uh, pumping into those things. You want to be able to fire your pull-up muscles on demand. Um, so working on some pull-up rows, maybe some, uh, some ring rows. We're going to go back into a three minute heart rate elevation at 90 to 95%. This is very important guys. Make sure that whenever you're doing this 90 to 95%, you are breathing like hell. You want to be able to mimic whatever you're going to be doing in the workout. So again, it's no surprise. Um, after you get done with that, you're going to hop off that Airdyne rower or, or come in from outside wherever you're running um, and get on some overhead squats. You're going to work up to your weight and get comfortable with that weight. Focus on grip, focus on foot placement, how you're going to get the bar up. Um, and then go into your pull-ups. How are you going to section those pull-ups up? Are you going to do butterflies? Are you going to do kipping? Are you going to do unbroken unbroken reps? When it comes, uh, when it are comes, are you going to do strict? Are you going to do strict pull-ups? Yeah, I would not recommend that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when uh, when it comes time to uh, to to get those extra reps, how are you going to transition your grip after this uh, after this 10 to 15 minute warm uh, warm up? Make sure that you get your video going. Um, Take take measurements of uh, take measurements of the bar. Uh, see about weights. Make sure that it's up to the CrossFit game standards, and get you about 10 to 20 minute rest period in. Uh, cool down. Make sure the sweat is dry, and then attack the wad. That's all I got. My bros have some excellent content-driven uh, advice for you for a 14.2 open workout. What I have for you now, though, is Chris's hot tips. Okay, this is the most important bit. Tip number one: There's a neon quota to meet. Minimum two garments. You want to go shoe, shirt at least. Uh, I would recommend going bright neon ass green or blue undies too. Sexiness goes a long way in a wad. Important as far as pre-workout nutrition. Pre-wadding gluten the night before plus uh, your tall, venti, caffeine-laden beverage from Starbucks pre-wad. You might get, what well, I'm a reference CTP here, the overhead squirts. Yeah, you don't That's want your it. overhead squats to turn into overhead squirts. You don't. You don't want overhead squirts going on. Gut bombs, stay away. Modest caffeine intake, uh, no gluten, pre-wad. Uh, third thing, elbow to elbow alignment. Once you crush this fucking thing, line up the elbow, CTP. Line up the elbow, execute confident high fives to celebrate. The most important thing to consider here. You've got your plan. You've got a few things you know are important to focus on. Be confident that you can take that in the battle, but don't get too uptight about crushing this thing. You gotta learn to relax. What I would do before, I'm not gonna do this shit by the way, but if I was gonna do this, if I was gonna <laughs> wad this up, I would spend probably 10 minutes lying on the ground an hour before, steadying my mind, telling myself that it's not that big a deal. If I don't crush, I can still go do good in the weeks ahead. I just need to relax, calm myself, and then probably spend five minutes before I start warm up going, what exactly are my weaknesses? Elbow flexibility, not elbow flexibility, but ankle range of motion, uh, my warm up. The key things from watching this video, you know, those are my go tos, those are the things I need to work on. Spend that time going right. This is my plan and keep a very clear, crisp vision of what you need to do. And like I said, man, have fun. But don't forget the neon blue underwear. I'd show you mine. Uh, no, I don't have mine right now. With that, you're going to do well. Trust me. And might I add, ladies, uh, now's the time. If you have a very padded bra, chest to bar pull ups yeah. can be very easy. If you, if you struggle with uh, your allotment in this world, Stuff them down. I don't think the judge is going to give you a hassle. Just two make sure it doesn't fall out. Two. Then you're going to have a bad time. Ashley, where do you go? Two-ply Charmin for the stuff? Definitely. Do you make a three-ply? Is that a thing? <laughs> if they did, go for that. Don't go, don't, don't go cheap, don't go cheap uh, toilet paper at Kroger. Don't get like the tissue paper stuff that your finger pokes through and it goes straight in your butthole. <laughs> go go two-ply. Go two-ply. That's how you get the natural fullness. That'll give you an inch range of motion benefit. <laughs> Um, real quick, just, tell just them laps. to subscribe, and if you got, if you know someone who could use some tips, share it on Facebook. Oh, yeah.
All right, thanks for listening. If you want more tips just like this, you can always go to barbellstruck.com, sign up for the newsletter, and we'll send you 14.3, uh, 14.4, and 14.5 when those videos come out. Good luck in the open. <laughs> you didn't say either of the things I asked you to say. I didn't even hear you say that. Be sure to subscribe to YouTube. Also, on social media, Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, tag an athlete that you think will get a lot out of these videos. That way they can see the videos and they can go crush the open just like you're gonna do. <laughs> or like this dude. <laughs>